This could, could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says... <laughs> got time for a rant cast easter's coming and i gotta go pop out some eggs see you next week okay see you next week who knew that a rubber chicken made eggs well you learn something new every day welcome to rant cast number 78 entitled this is america and that's the way you say it that's the way you should say it this is america say it with anger in your voice bitterness this is the uh actually um I'm quoting uh, a heckler who was in the uh, audience in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Cobb Energy Center uh, just last night, where he uh, he decided that uh, he needed to express himself, even though I do this long thing at the beginning, where I try to guide folks to understand that this isn't what we do now anymore at these uh, when there's a, a night where a comic is working, especially in a theater, and people have paid, and, and many overpaid, uh, to see entertainment. And so uh, I've kind of, in, in my own fashion, politely said, you know, you shut the fuck up. And uh, he had done very well until literally what was the last moments of my act. And I've been kind of uh, working on... Uh, getting my special together and I moved a section of it to the end and I've gotten through all of it and so I finally was getting a sense of the arc if you, if you don't mind my using some professional phrasing and um, and I finally was getting a, a sense of it and, and he interrupted with the what about Biden? Well I had already uh, talked about, uh, I'd already kind of thrown uh, Biden on the, uh, under the bus very quickly, and there was no need for this, none whatsoever, none, uh-uh. Um, and uh, it, and it, so uh, that I thought was enough, and I kind of dealt with it, and uh, apparently, uh, he, it turns out he had been up in the, he's in the balcony, I thought he was that's it, it, down uh, on, the, on the floor, really, but he was actually up in the balcony itself, uh, that's the interesting thing about when you have a heckler in a theater. Sometimes, at least for me, it's like a hearing test. And apparently, I'm, I don't have a, I've got a directional problem. But um, he was upstairs, and uh, he'd been muttering through the whole performance, I gather, about various and sundry things, because he was drunk. And uh, finally, um, when I started uh, to do the uh, finished up, and we got him quiet, and he kind of fucked up the ending, and... Uh, and then I came back on the stage and, and started the rant is due. And immediately, he started yelling stuff. Immediately. And I couldn't really tell what he was yelling, but I was not going to have him yell during a performance. Now, but the reason I'm talking about this now is we can't really put this out. This would make no sense to have on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, on the rant cast if you're just listening to it. And even if you're watching it, it, it uh, folks the other night who were watching didn't quite understand what was going on. That's the other reason I'm talking about this. We had to kind of hold off until we had had him removed from the room because I wasn't going to have him talk and I can deal with it uh, when it's just me alone on stage dealing with a heckler while I'm talking and it's irritating and all of that, but I can do it. Uh, I'm a trained professional. And, uh, but this was for the rant cast, and this is for the stuff that the folks in Atlanta, many who were in the audience that night had written in, and I was just not going to take it anymore. And it makes no sense to have somebody, you know, yelling stuff in the background. And while they finally got him, and it was a while to get him out of there, uh, he, was, uh, he was a real pain in the ass. I, I, I didn't quite realize, and you kind of, as you're standing there, realize, well, actually, you do realize while you're standing there that, that you, know, what if, you know, what if he's got a gun? Um, what if he's that crazy? Um, I figured he was a drunky drunk, and he was a drunky drunk. I'm pretty good at picking that up, having been a drunky drunk myself several times. Um, but usually I don't stand in the theater and yell shit. Um, unless it's my own shit. And uh, so if I was worried about that. I also was worried about the fact that now he's up in the balcony. What if he falls off the balcony? And then we got to deal with that. That, that. That's just, you know, really, it's just go. Can you just go? And it was, it took a while to have him removed. And so uh, it was, a, it was a long night. 
And uh, he shouted on the way out, this is America, which is, and it, yes, it is. And it was, I'm, I'm glad he at least could locate uh, on, a, on a large sense of where he was in the, in the universe, if that's what he was saying. I mean, but what he was really saying was just that he should be allowed to yell whatever shit he wants because this is America. And that's kind of nonsense, and we know that. And you certainly don't do it at a performance of a comic, you know, or at a play, or at any live event. God damn it, I hate Metallica. Why did I come tonight? No, you don't get to do that. Um, and eventually, uh, he, we, he, was, he, he was gone. It's, you know, and it's been interesting that uh, until uh, Atlanta, they, they, generally that speech that I do at the beginning, which he kind of, uh, not expecting this, uh, won't talk about it, but the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing coming along. So uh, not anticipating that, just kind of anticipating what I knew to be uh, coming down the pike with Brandon and the rest of it, uh, that folks would be yelling shit out. And uh, so I wanted to kind of, you know, cut it off at the pass. And the, and the great thing about uh, my audience or any audience that comes to see any comic that they're a fan of is they will control the room. Um, a lot of times... Uh, you find that those who are working there in terms of security, uh, they're not trained in it. They basically have a, it's like that thing I was once given a thing to, uh, at a, a rock festival. I was given a, a thing that said parking on it, and I was in charge of parking. Yeah, well, I don't know fuck about parking. So a couple of cars kind of went up a hill. They shouldn't have been stuck there, okay? But I, I, I ran away. I did what a person should do. I ran away. And in part, that's what goes on in, in the security of these uh, theaters. These people, you know, it's, they're, they're really just a kind of, they're kind of at times glorified ushers. At times they really uh, have real major security there, especially down toward the stage. Um, but this was, uh, this, it was, you know, this is, you know, this is really, uh, uh, so it, 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 this is really something that the audience handles in a lot of ways. Especially, and it's, it's been doing that because their response after I make that speech and talk about the tell folks to shut the buck, uh, buck up, the audience goes wild. So the person who might be thinking of yelling realizes there's a lot of people there tonight who've already made a decision about, you know, they're going to enjoy this show. And that's what they're there for. And they're not there for some sort of critical analysis of a comic. Um, and I could go over that again, but I'm not. And uh, so that was last night. And uh, I'm hoping uh, we're getting uh, together this um, my special. I, I, just to let you know, it's, uh, we'll be doing it on May 15th, Paramount Theater in Huntington, Long Island. Huntington, Long Island is an interesting spot, just far enough from New York that it's irritating to get there. It really, really, but a, but a space that I'm thrilled to be uh, working in and getting this up and going in. And then I can go back and talk about Biden, where there's a point in the act where I should talk about Biden, as opposed to now, which is uh, as special as about the pandemic. And, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be coming out soon after we, uh, we get it shot in, on May 15th. The Huntington Theater, I'll repeat that, the, the Paramount Theater in Huntington. This was a, a long week because I, I kind of came, I saw mom, which was very good. That didn't make it a long week, but she had a lot to tell me about retirement and uh, uh, didn't really discuss my 401k options, but she said this was time for me to retire. And I have considered maybe doing it in the middle of a show, just saying, okay, mom told me to retire, I'm going to leave. And just walk off the stage, maybe start doing that every night so that, you know, jackass is like, this is the America guy. And then I could say at the end, I'm leaving, I'm retiring. Why? Because this is America. So uh, I would leave then, and I think that people would be kind of stunned, but I think it's a show they'd remember. Uh, then we go on to, uh, I, I saw Mom, and that was great. Um, she's, she's doing as well as can be ex expected under all sorts of things. She doesn't get to get out much, uh, as, as much as possible, partly because the, the idiots who run this institution have not done a great job in terms of COVID protocols. Uh, even now, yes, even now, even now, because the, the, you know, my mother's 103, and a lot of the folks in there are, are very elderly, and so it, it is kind of a problem when COVID hits there, whether other people think so or not. 
Um, but uh, she's been managing. She just hasn't been able to get outside. And uh, so she told me this the story about how she had reached her fame. And she repeated the story three times. And each time the story got better and better. And she became more of the focus. And she really got it down. And it was really something. And apparently, uh, um, she had uh, basically told uh, the audience something. Uh, oh, yeah, she told them the story of this gold chain that my grandfather had made, who was a jeweler, and that this had brought a young couple together. It started with the young couple talking about it, but by the time my mother did the third story, she was the one on stage talking about the gold chain. And there was a writer there from the New York Times, she said, and he was there in all three instances and then he saw it and uh, he was a small writer there but he got the word out and it spread around the country and that's how uh, my mother became famous and uh, the story that I just wanted to relate to you I went on to the University of North Carolina uh, where they have um, taken my collection of work they've asked for it all of my writing everything uh, and everything that was written about me and it's a um, I'm humbled by it. I'm honored by it. I'm, I'm tremendously proud of it, and it, uh, and it's, and and it's. I think uh, it's uh, it's really one. Of, I'm, I'm I'm kind of overwhelmed by it. It's certainly more than a Grammy, that's for sure. And I'm glad that my words have a home, and especially in that library. It's that's it's a really, uh, it's, uh, you know, one of those majestic buildings that you point at and go, "Fuck, my shit's in there." Oh boy. So uh, I'm thrilled about that. Uh, I did a uh, interview there in front of a, a, a small audience. It was the first day um, that the mask requirement was um, dropped in Chapel Hill. They have, uh, uh, and so I, there it was, so they had a smaller crowd than they normally would have because they still wanted to uh, maintain a sense of social distance, not a big sense, but certainly uh, kept the crowd down. Um, and then I taught in the classroom uh, because they're hoping, and I'm. This was the first. The first. Um, that's the sound of the road. We're on the road, and we're passing some golf carts. They're heading their way behind me uh, because I'll be going to play golf at the end of this week, and I need 30 carts with me, at least 30. Uh, one for every uh, hole that I play, I, and sometimes I repeat the holes, and I like to use a different cart for each hole. It's, it's, it's a new thing, it's a new theory I have, that if you get in a different cart each time, you're gonna play a great game, and your, your, your game will improve. And I'm gonna test it out, and that, that's why the truck is following us. And we, we definitely are on the road. We're going to Charleston, North Carolina. I neglected to say that. But getting back to uh, where I'm talking, what I'm talking about, because I got uh, drifted there, didn't I? Well, I was a little worried that we were gonna hit my golf carts. I wasn't so much worried about my body, but I was really worried about those cards. I then spoke to the class that day. Uh-huh. Didn't think I'd get back to it, but I, I certainly did and didn't forget. Uh, this is a, a major step forward. I could go into that for a while. But uh, I went, uh, it, basically we were hoping that, um, they're hoping that classes will, will use the, the stuff that I've written and, and, uh, and use it for research uh, about the work that, 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 that I've written. Um, and uh, it's called Primary Sources. And the, 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 one of the reasons that I think they took my work was that uh, uh, because I'm, I'm, there, there's not a lot of folks with primary sources left. Most people, a lot of people now are just writing um, on, uh, on their computers. They're writing, they're typing their stuff in. Uh, and they don't do cursive anymore. And they're not teaching cursive anymore, which I discovered this week. So I'm in a class, really, in which some of the kids really literally could not read what I wrote. I will repeat that. You can, for all these folks who think that you don't teach cursive, they couldn't read what I wrote. Well, it's kind of fucking important because that, if you can't read the, the, the written word, not the printed word, the written word, then I would have to call that illiteracy. And you, you fucking teach that. You teach kids how to write longhand, if you will, cursive if you need to, and it will, it's a different way of thinking, totally different. And there's a, the way in which you, when you type something, 
when you're on your computer, that's one form of thought, and it's a completely different thought when you're sitting there writing stuff out. And so many in the class, some of them apparently didn't understand it from what I heard later. Um, it was an interesting class to teach. Uh, now that I've done it once, I think I know how to go back and, uh, and talk to them. The, the class was called The Ethics of Stand-Up. I won't even go into that. Um, but I was a little worried because that's what we that we'd be discussing that because I really didn't I don't really kind of understand what that means in, in a way because a lot of the reason we get into stand up is so we can say anything we fucking want. <laughs> um, but uh, they asked some great questions. It was uh, I was I was glad to be able to do it and for the and I'm hoping uh, that I'll be able to spend some more time down there with the students. That's something I want to do as I kind of. Uh, make a transition out of just performing all the time and uh, and hopefully it works out for and I know that I will learn a lot from it um, and that's where we're at uh, really that's what I've been up to uh, I then went on to Chattanooga we had a very nice show there and even ate at the Chattanooga Choo Choo train uh, what was formerly the Chattanooga Choo Choo station um, and it's and we uh, it was nice to be there. They've changed the name. I'm, I won't even say it because they should call it Chattanooga Choo Choo. Why would you fucking change the name, huh? Well, but what do I know? Chattanooga, great town, and it's kind of boomed since I've been there. Uh, but I found that a lot of these places, once I've come and gone, that when I've come back, they went, God, Lewis is coming back. Let's spruce it up. And they certainly have there. Atlanta, we just drove out of Atlanta in one of the most exciting uh, rides I've ever had out of Atlanta. Uh, we actually drove at the speed limit. That never fucking happens. So maybe there's a brighter day coming in Charleston where nobody will stand up and go, this is America. <laughs> that won't happen, maybe. And I'll be able to do the whole act and we'll get it down and I'll be able to start really um, nailing it for the 15th of May, and I hope so. And then we'll be... And then we'll be uh, Coming back with you, the uh, my schedule for the year is out there now. Uh, it's coming up in uh, the fall. The Off the Rail tour will continue. For those of you on the 29th, for those of you in Detroit, I'll be there at the State Theater. Uh, it's the 29th of, of April. On the 30th, I will be at uh, the Chicago Theater in Chicago. And uh, we still got plenty of tickets there. Plenty of fucking tickets. So the 29th and the 30th, Detroit, Chicago, still tickets. 6th and 7th, coming back home. Uh, be in Washington, D.C. at One of my favorite, favorite places, the Warner Theater. Uh, we have plenty of tickets there. We got plenty of tickets everywhere. I got tickets in places I'm not even playing. There are tickets still on the table. Those of you in cities uh, that go, is Lewis coming here? Uh, I'm not, but there are tickets, uh, and you can buy them. Uh, one thing uh, I will once again ask as I uh, plot around the country, uh, it has not ended the, the fact that I will receive a, 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 on numerous occasions uh, texts and, I mean, to emails to the, uh, to the come in to uh, the rent is due or to on uh, my Twitter feed or the rest of it. You know, when are you going to be here? And I was just fucking there. So if any of you out there know how it is that you're supposed to get a message across to people that you're in town, if you could help me uh, find that out, it would really be great. If any of you can figure out how to actually advertise in this age of total bombardment, I am just telling you, there's, there's more money than you can fucking imagine, okay? It will make Facebook look like you're fucking, you know, Facebook would be like pocket change. You know, that, that group of douchebags, well, we're going to target some shit. Well, you know what? No, it works only to a point. Oh, look at what we'll do with these. No. There has to be another way at it. I don't know how it is. I, maybe blimps <laughs> going over every city that I'm in, and that may be the next one. So we've got that. Go to the website. We've got more shows coming up. Remember that there's the... Uh, here it is, just blasting out. I'm doing my own commercials. That's how come. I'm sorry. You can turn this off now. But the, uh, the Lewis Black uh, fan club continues to be a way in which you can get uh, the best seats in the house and beat Ticketmaster and the rest of those jackasses. I just had a guy, literally, uh, one of the uh, 
ranch that was sent in. A guy couldn't get to the show because his phone was too old to 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 download the ticket from Ticketmaster, who couldn't fucking send him a ticket. So it may be an option you might want to use, all right? And you you probably spend uh, probably a little less than you would at Ticketmaster, but you're also going to get the fucking seat you want. Um, or at least something close to it. They're the best seats in the house. And it will give you the opportunity to go in our vault and listen to this idiot scream, this is America. We will have that, probably some footage of that for you. And uh, whatever else we got on hand. Um, there's some old turkey sandwiches down there too, and I hope you enjoy them. So that's the way it is. We're sorry about last uh, the, the Chattanooga live stream. Our friend James, who was doing the filming today, um, he, he uh, decided to make a run for it on the day of the show and then had to fly. Uh, it didn't work. And thousands of people were stranded that day. James was only a number, only a number, a sad little number. And he couldn't make it there. And we tried to, We tried in all of our ways to get it done. Uh, I was going to send it out as a flip book. Um, but I just couldn't get the stick figures together at the time. But uh, so that's why we lost it. He's an integral part of our team. So we got we just weren't able to get it out there. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. And I know that many in, in Chattanooga are going to uh, safe spaces today to deal with that. Uh, they have been so traumatized by their rants not being read that uh, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that they're out by next week and get back to work. James will be writing apology letters to all of them. And uh, we look forward to uh, spending some more time with you as the weeks roll on. Next week, uh, um, there will, we, we'll have a rant cast, but uh, I'm going to be taking a break. Uh, at an undisclosed location in North Carolina, I'm going to be playing some golf. Because I watched this Masters, and I said, I can fucking do that, too. I got my golf carts are coming, and it's going to be really good. Because I want to prove to myself once and for all that I... I really, I, every time I go out there, I think, fuck, I should have turned pro. And I have to teach myself over and over again that not only shouldn't I have not turned pro, I shouldn't even be playing the goddamn game. It's going to be a fun week. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for, uh, for watching. I, I deeply appreciate the time that we spend together. And, and remember, next week's introduction is going to be really small, so don't be uh, upset about this because I went on much too long this time. And thanks to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill for making me, well, about as happy as I could possibly be for 10 seconds. Always a pleasure. Take care. Lewis Black's Rantcast is brought to you by Dadgrass. Mellower vibes are a moment away with Dadgrass. Dadgrass is legal, organic hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash Lewis for 20% off your first order. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, where, uh, where, where I've gotten a taste of what the Great Divide is like. It's Siri Bob, where you just can't give everybody enough of what they fucking need. <laughs> God. Yeah, I know it is not Oxnard, boy. I, I, I'd pay to be that character at times. I was, uh, but I'm, uh, we're, we're coming to you from the Cobb Energy Center, and this is, uh, for those of you who don't know it, uh, who are watching tonight at home, this is the, where all the energy in Atlanta comes from. <laughs> Every bit of it. The audience comes in here, they are electroded up, and then their excitement is wired out. And if, uh, if the at <laughs> You gotta go, okay? Seriously. Well, I'm okay. But so for those of you who are watching at home, uh, this is actually the first time I've ever stopped doing a feed because it's just, it, he started yelling at the end and you can't hear him. And uh, he's been bothering the audience back who's been sitting toward the back of the room all night. And uh, enough is enough. And um, <laughs> in the, uh, 
And I can, I don't mind dealing with somebody who's come in and I can deal with hecklers. I've been through, I've, I've, I've been in rooms here that would just frighten you. Um, I was once in a room in, uh, in Boston called Nick's where I actually said after the show that I would rather have thrown meat at bears. <laughs> so are we there? Is he gone? Come on. Well, no, well, thank you. And I'm, now I have to reconsider my whole special. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that, um, but it didn't make sense. To, no, well, no, it's, it, but it's, you know, and I tried to, that's why I kind of talk about it at the beginning, but, uh, but it's, it, you know, this is, it's one thing for me to have a heckler and I can deal with a heckler. It's another thing for me to be reading what you wrote and deal with somebody who's, who seems to be wrapped up in the next election, which is, uh, and I, I'd like, to, I just want to get to dinner. <laughs> I don't know how he ended up. I don't know what possessed him. I don't know how he's been ar, 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 all night long. I consider myself to be a barking dog, but a lot of the times hecklers are really just seals. <laughs> um, well, that's no, not tonight. I'm, I'm having some fish. <laughs> but I appreciate the offer. So we're here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we couldn't be happier. Um, and... Uh, and, and, and we got some really great stuff that came in, which is one of the reasons I really wanted to bring that to a halt, because he would have yelled through it. Yeah. Um, but we start with, uh, you know, um, the, and if you've not been to Atlanta, it's, it, you know, it, it's, it, it, it come in like early August when you can really sweat your nuts off. <laughs> you know? No, it's a great city, it really is. And if you're thinking of driving while you're here, <laughs> okay, forget it, just, just forget it. Find a spot, stay there, wander around, then go to another place, find a spot, stay there, wander around. You don't want to get on the road here. It is literally like the Firecracker 500 all day long. Uh, so this is from Michael Sard. He said, why am I writing content for a smart comedian funny comedian like you. And that's followed by James Fuggity, who wrote, write your own fucking jokes, Lewis. <laughs> you fucking deadbeat. And, uh, and compared to what I just dealt with, you two were really kind of nice. <laughs> but I'm going to repeat this, because we just started doing this again. Um, and it, it, we, we'd been doing it for a, about four, five, six years. And, uh, uh, every night, and it kind of evolved and evolved and evolved. And when people write that in, that means you don't, you've never watched it, and you don't quite get it. What it allows, you see, I was up here for like an hour and seven minutes, that's eight, eight minutes, that's like a show. And then I'm giving you a bonus show in which, in which I allow you to tell the world, because it goes throughout the world, you two, who are going, God damn it, it goes to the, through the, out the world. It allows Atlanta to speak to the rest of the world, unfiltered by somebody asking some sort of questions and stuff. It allows Atlanta to talk about and bitch about stuff. I've been bitching here for fucking 68, 70 minutes, okay? And you know what? I am tired of listening to my own fucking nonsense. So I wanted to hear what's pissing you off. That's why I do it and I continue to do it. And when you watch John Oliver or any other, other TV shows, those things are written by uh, uh, people. <laughs> and what I've done is create a TV show that is the cheapest TV show in the history of TV shows. It's me, an iPad, and my writers. And my writers are real people writing real things in real time about stuff. This is Ed Wallace, uh, 
My, my, hi, Lewis. My wife has been an educator for 30 plus years. She's a saint. In the eight years we've been married, I've learned much about some of the problems of our educational system. There are many, but one of the biggest is this. We have fucking moronic bureaucrats and politicians who are not and never have been educators making huge decisions about education. It is pure insanity. And then from Mandy Natkin, why the fuck won't my kids go to sleep? Why do I have to spend so much money on a two-year-old's birthday when I know she won't remember it? Why does my three-year-old ask so many questions? Also, why are they obsessed with their asses? My two-year-old loves to dig in her diaper and play with her poop, and my three-year-old's favorite comeback is poopy butt. The well, one thing I can say, it's good you got a night out, Mandy. This is from Danny Loken. When parents blame teachers for everything, the fact that I have to grind my teeth, grip my desk, which has finger-sized grooves on the side, by the way, and apologize that I made your kid feel bad with merely expectations, oh yeah, and reality! <laughs> After what just happened, this is really, I thought this would be the, the, the sparking point, but we already had the spark. <laughs> I've never gotten anything, uh, I'm gonna read something, I've never gotten anything on this subject, ever. And I expect that there will be all sorts of things. Feel free to write in about it. Um, this is from Sean Carr. Uh, this rant may be controversial, but I don't give a fuck about any feelings that may be put out of sorts. I'm so sick of hearing about politicians trying to limit reproductive rights. First of all, you dickwads who are in favor of this, you should be ashamed of yourself. Abortion is legal and has nothing to do with you. And if you start to use a religious argument to prevent this right, you're a fucking nut. Because I'm also sure that you are the same person refusing to get a COVID-19 vaccine with, by saying, my body, my choice. Okay? <laughs> However, your atrophied, syphilitic, Swiss cheese brain morons need to shove your objections so far up your ass, you never see it again. And by the way, there's an extremely simple way to prevent unintended pregnancies, and that would be birth control. <laughs> Teach your children to use birth control pills and how to wrap their little peckers in a condom. <laughs> Why must we fight over an effect when a better solution is prevent the root cause of the issue? Also, if you are now thinking to yourself, that talking to your broods of failure will cause them to want to have sex, then you're fucking stupid. <laughs> Research has shown that sex education actually reduces unintended pregnancies and most importantly, stops the spread of STIs. Every fucking cum stain idiot who is more interested in fake morality should just get sterilized to prevent them from ever getting pleasure. <laughs> Now fucking fix this and provide birth control and quit being assholes to people who do not share your ideals. Fuck it. And give your kids baby condoms and teach them to use them. Oh, and finally, if you try to blame a woman for getting pregnant and say it's not your son's fault, then just remember he had to be there to drizzle his jizz all over to cause a pregnancy. <laughs> Yeah, they, these are jokes that I wrote for myself. <laughs> it takes two to tango, and they both had a hand in this outcome. Treat everybody fairly and compassionately. If not, you're a bitch who has no brains between your ears. <laughs> Grow the fuck up, you dick Jesus. And then I like this at the end. Thanks for reading my rant, Lewis. <laughs> Thank you.
So I'm interested to see what the response is. I also think that what was important about that was the, was the whole idea of sex education. It's unbelievable that schools don't do that. It, when I was a kid, there was, there was basically, they kind of gave us a sex education course that was, whew, but, and I wrote uh, actually a series for Maryland Public Television and the Eastern Shore, which was a lot, it, it, at that point in time, this is, I got almost 45 years ago, um, they, I, I was supposed to write like a, uh, kind of a, a, like a soap opera about, and, and basically try to get kids to kind of like, basically try to push kids not to get married. And um, it, in the, at that point, uh, the Eastern Shore of Maryland was filled with people who had apparently they, they couldn't get into Mississippi, so they said, hey, move to the Eastern Shore. And, and I, mean, I only say that because I wrote this stuff, and then and I, I, they, we got into like the eighth and the ninth one, and the, they said to me, you know, um, uh, and it was 30 episodes, they, and they're not supposed to get married, and they're having sex, and they're telling me, well, you can't talk about birth control. And I'm like, what the fuck am I writing this for? You don't want them to get married, but they're gonna have sex, and, they, and the kids are gonna know they're gonna have sex, and you're not gonna mention condoms or birth, con anything, what? Oh my God. And then we wonder why this shit continues. It was unbelievable, unbefucking believable Then they told me, they fought, you know, by the 10th one, they said, Ooh, you know, a lot of the kids are really getting negative about marriage. That's the point! <laughs> this is from Avi Avivi. I'm happy to see you live tonight. Did you know that Georgia, home to Marjorie Taylor Greene, that we have a gubernatorial candidate with political billboards and a bus that show her name and three words stacked vertically? Guns, Jesus, babies. I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> is that right? Yes. Guns is first? <laughs> Jesus, uh, the imaginary one, is second, and then babies, third. <laughs> Woo, that's some fucking platform. <laughs> wow, it would be great if they were stacked vertically in a beer can, side of a beer can. <laughs> This is from Mary Wallace. I live in Northeast Georgia and uh, drove down to Atlanta for your show tonight. For clarification, I live on the east side of the Blue Ridge Mountains, so I have a mountain range to protect me from the people who voted for Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> I've enjoyed watching your rant cast this spring, however, and I've noticed a recurring theme. You tend to complain about how cold it is. This got me thinking. Is Lewis Black causing unseasonably cold weather in the towns he visits? I'm a teacher, and I believe in the scientific method. Therefore, I decided to test my theory. You go to a town, the temperature plummets, you point out that it is spring, so it shouldn't be so cold. We've been enjoying wonderful spring weather here in Atlanta. If you don't count the recent thunderstorms and tornadoes, at least it's been warm. But last night, <laughs> I had to cover my plants to protect them from freezing weather. It must do the same thing tonight. I noticed that this coincided with your arrival. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. Thank you, Mary. And I'm going to end with this, and I want to Thank you all, really, for your patience this evening and uh, for coming out. And, uh, and really for, for giving us a minute to, to finally clear, clear him from the room, because it was just getting to be too much, and I don't think it was fair to you as an audience. So. This is really, this one is, uh, I think, special. This is from Jason Flay. Fuck sweet tea.
that brown hummingbird food tasting piss of a drink. <laughs> but beyond the taste, because hey, to each their own, right? If you want to lose a foot, who am I to say you can't? <laughs> it's the fact, it is the fact that if you order an iced tea in the South, you have to use the term unsweet tea for a regular iced tea. Unsweet tea? What the fuck is that? <laughs> you put sugar into iced tea to make it sweet tea. One can order an iced tea in the North, put sugar in it, it becomes sweet tea. <laughs> try ordering an iced tea in the South and try taking the sugar out. You can't, because iced tea is the basis for sweet tea. It's like saying, I want an undiet Coke. <laughs> Walk into a southern restaurant when the waitress comes over, try saying, excuse me, ma'am, do you happen to have an undiet Coke? <laughs> do you mean Coke? No, I mean a diet Coke. Take out that shit that makes it a Coke and give me that, god damn it. I hate sweet tea. Thank you, one and all. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online. We've all gotten to the point in checkout, and we see that box that's asking us for that promo code. It sits there and taunts us. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that searches the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They can help you when you buy all sorts of products, tech, fashion, everyday products, even food delivery. It's very easy to use. You just install its web browser app. I was able to do that myself. And you can go shopping on your favorite websites like you normally do. And when it comes time to check out, Honey shows up. Yes, it does. And it helps you. You activate Honey and just wait a couple of seconds for it to search for coupons. And if it finds one, you just watch the prices drop. To date, Honey has saved over $2 billion for over 17 million users. And I'm one of them. I've done it on a couple of occasions. And Honey showed up with a few coupons, and sometimes as many as five, and it whips through them, and sometimes its coupon is better than what I'm being offered by the product itself. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's free and installs in seconds. Using it not only helps you, but it supports this podcast. Oh, and I know you want to do that. <laughs> Get Honey for free at www.joinhoney.com slash Lewis. That's L-E-W-I-S. That's joinhoney.com slash Lewis. We are in Charleston, uh, South Carolina, one of my favorite cities. And uh, we're at the, the Charleston Music Hall. I used to come here and appear at the, uh, in North Charleston which isn't really Charleston, <laughs> okay? I, I wanted to appear in Charleston for years ago. This is not fucking Charleston. I could be fucking anywhere. And we had some of the strangest shows. I, some of the hecklers who showed up there seemed to be more pissed than I was. <laughs> wow. But, uh, so I was thrilled when we finally, I guess, the last time I was here, we came here and I'm really much happier to be downtown. I come, I come, uh, I've come a number of times to visit the city. I've not been here. It's fucking. It's a, It's one of those places you don't want to come here. Um, and it, it, and you're going to piss them off by coming here. <laughs> Just know that they will look at you and that you will ask for a direction. They'll go fuck you. Get out of here. <laughs> we'll just get right to this because there's a bunch of them. A lot of them were written by. Those of you who are here tonight, which is great. This is from Jared Schwartz. Charleston drivers. I shouldn't be surprised they're so bad because it's what happens when you have everyone and their mother moving here from all across the country. You get some prick from New York cutting off a dimwit from Iowa and bam, fuckers end up on their roofs. 
This would all be fine if they contained the carnage from their regional idiosyncrasies to themselves. But when I get a bumper flying off a Nissan Altima ending up riding shotgun to me, well, I get pissed, God damn it! <laughs> Kristen Jaxa, uh, my, this is wonderful. My daughter was over planning her wedding with my husband and me yesterday. Out of nowhere, she began complaining that her future husband will be missing her birthday every year now because he will attend the, the guy's golf trip held that time of year with my husband, his friends, and her brothers. I did not know how to tell her this is just the beginning of her man prioritizing his little balls and shaft. <laughs> over her for a lifetime. I had the sex talk with her years ago. I just refocused on the invite list and smiled. <laughs> Elizabeth Gorisiak? Gorisiak. Gorisiak? Oh, thank you. We're both, I'm never, I'm usually completely wrong. So how many COVID-19 booster shots are gonna be enough? Uh, uh, People post every time they get one. Uh, I don't. I don't. The people who do are nuts. Okay, there's no reason to post it. Or there's no reason to, to post your Wordle fucking answer. <laughs> Same thing. Should I feel bad that I don't care anymore? No, you shouldn't. Why should you? Who gives a shit? You shouldn't. But you might, if, 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 if there's a reason, like, I, they, you know, that uh, I, I go and I ask uh, the people that I trust, should I get this? And they'll tell me yes or no, you know? And that's it, it's that simple. You either get it or you don't get it. And that's the deal. That's, it's not a, you know, it's just a good thing they're around. But you don't fucking come out of there every time. I'm fucking after four of them, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rich Taylor. Now, I'm going to read, now there's a run here that I'm reading, okay? Because there was a number of folks who presented this to me. Uh, one after the other, they came in. Rich Taylor, who do you think is the slimiest South Carolina senator? <laughs> For those of you who missed it at home, it's Lindsey Graham was one vote. It's Lindsey Graham or Tim Scott. Lindsay supported Katanji Brown Jackson for the DC appellate court six months ago, but now claims she is soft on child pornographers. Oh yeah, that's what she is. That's psychotic. That's psychotic. That's psychotic. That's psychotic. It is. You just can't make shit up, all right? Or if you're gonna make shit up, you come out, Lindsay, and have the duck tell us. That's what you do. And then I fucking go, he trained a duck to say that. He's committed. <laughs> Scott was the first black senator from the Deep South since Reconstruction, but voted against the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. My eyes went to the back of my head when that happened. And Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. Can he borrow his ball back, balls back from Jim DeMint's lockbox, <laughs> even for historic civil rights votes? Well, I don't quite understand the end of it, and I was hoping a reaction here would lead me to understand it. But even you seem confused. <laughs> David Brand, I'd be willing to re-erect some of the Confederate statues if we could take away Lindsey fucking Graham and make him a museum piece. <laughs> yeah. He was so much better when McCain was around. Yeah. yeah I, he, well, I mean, he was. I mean, at least McCain, like McCain must have had something on him. I'm serious. I am fucking serious. Because McCain kind of had him, you know, he, 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 he'd start to go and McCain go, shh. <laughs> this, Lindsey Graham drives me nuts. This motherfucker might as well be a weather vane. He never commits to anything. One day is A and always has to be A. Then the next day it's B and always been B. Fuck A that never really happened. It's unbelievable. He does kind of go boop, 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 boop. <laughs> The only reason uh, that, fo that fucking fox running around on the Capitol grounds got put down for rabies was because it bit Lindsey Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He is something else. I mean, God, whoo. I don't know how you do it. Those two senators, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I got, and to be honest, I have Chuck Schumer and he just irritates the fuck out of me. I'm like, God, shh, don't talk, don't talk, go. Find somebody to talk, find up, like, maybe if we got a, uh, an antelope to speak for you. I literally think if we just had a menagerie of animals that talked, we'd be better off. Andrea Hodges, the, the, I'm currently at the Charleston show. These seats are made for people with six foot long legs and a one foot wide ass. <laughs> when we're in the South, we're fat. <laughs> I'm reading this because he's a, a vet, and this is uh, Dean Brandt. How in the fuck can anyone believe that the Republican Party supports our veterans? Short and sweet, the country I served is being destroyed by people like Trump and Green. And as you would say, come on, people, wake the fuck up. So uh, thank you for, um, I, I wish, I, I hate saying thank you for your service, but I read that because you, you did serve and you were a vet. And I think that's, uh, we owe you a, a And if it made your day for me to read it and it upset some people in this room to hear it, it's okay because you were fucking wandering around doing shit that a lot of people can't even imagine. So uh, I, I just wish and I keep repeating it that at some point in my lifetime that we would actually make it possible for when vets come back that we give them everything they fucking need. Michael McFarlane, a very important message. Inflation didn't bother me until my Cialis prescription went up 10%. <laughs> there are priorities. This is Tam Tam Swanee. Wow, that's a Tam Tam. That's your name? Is that your name? Well, well she said she was here. She may have left. My fucking husband says, because I have advice for you, my fucking husband says he can't hear me say his name when he's in the next room. I think he's full of shit. <laughs> Fucker is just ignoring me. What should I do to him? Well, you can start with an ear trumpet. <laughs> Take him to have his ears checked. Take him to have him tested. And then if you find out he can hear well, then you can fucking go at him tooth and nail. Kevin Chase, my wife wants to name our kid. Now, this is, if you made this up, it's spectacular. P-T-O-U-G-H-N-E-I-G-H. -E and then in parentheses, pronounce Tony. <laughs> and I can't convince her otherwise. Uh, you're, you just tell her that's, that's a, that's a, no one, he's fucked when he gets to school. I'm telling you, you just tell her, he's fucked. Somebody's going to read, Petune? Petune? By the time you get to the, the fourth pronunciation, that kid's going to need an asthma inhaler. Then, thank you. You got the, You got it. <laughs> Fuck the rest of them. See you next time. <laughs> you keep laughing. Fuck them. <laughs> this is from Dale Morris. Why is there no fucking caramel corn for sale here? <laughs> Madeline Feliciano, uh, today is Palm Sunday, and as a choir director, I dread the beginning of Holy Week. All the fucking ashes and palms. <laughs> Catholics come out to receive a palm that they feel is going to be their salvation, and I hate it. <laughs> I've been fucking pushed out of the way and almost knocked down. Let me assure that the ashes and palms out there, the palm will not save you. Making your palm into a cross isn't going to save you. Come to mass, pray, and repent, fuckers. It's, it's a long week. 
in, start, in starting it with the crazy idiots that have no respect is too fucking much. <laughs> have a peaceful Passover, Lewis. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline. Kristen B. This, I've seen this before, too. Charleston roads flood all the time, even when it isn't raining, <laughs> due to high tides and climate change. Yet, they are still building on the peninsula next to the water that will rise and flood the land that they're building on. What the fuck? <laughs> this is Patrick Farrell. Fucking parking. <laughs> it's all but impossible to park in downtown Charleston. It's as bad as San Francisco. Um, if you think about uh, parking in a space for five minutes, forget about it. The parking patrol has psychic abilities. <laughs> Boom, they're on you. Like Will Smith on Chris Rock. <laughs> Slapped hard for it. And then there's the driveways. Every household has 33 cars. And you can't even fit two, let alone that everybody is driving monster trucks in HOA neighborhoods. You're not allowed to park on the street overnight unless you're one of them, for fuck's sake. I had two small toolboxes on my front stoop and got a call from the landlord telling that there were numerous complaints. But it's okay to fill your entire front lawn with blown up Santas and Christmas Snoopies and the same kind of crap for every holiday, and boats, and you can put your yard waste in the road. I have a good mind to run into some of this shit just to sue the fucking HOA. <laughs> Zack Siders. Charleston is known for its centuries of preserved historical architecture. Part of that preserved architecture are its quaint drawbridges. They take 20 minutes or more to open and close. Thousands of cars and all businesses in the city come to a screeching halt. <laughs> so one rich fucking asshole can drift slowly, merrily, leisurely by with his son. What really chaps my ass is when you see that rich asshole teaching his son how to point and laugh at we commoners as we seethe. Just seethe. A community united in seething. So maybe that is beautiful. Wow. Wow. And I leave you with this. I think it really sums everything up. From Lisa Burkhalter. My husband complains because I will not do anal. Watch me roll my eyes. <laughs> uh, I can't help you there. It's, it's, it's not my bailiwick. I really appreciate you all coming out this evening. It meant a lot. I appreciate you watching at home. Thanks again for coming out. Take care of each other. Thanks for what you wrote. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. It is produced by James Salkine. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brewer. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast. And most of all, thank you, all of you who ranted so well on this show. <laughs>